it just ever doesn't stop, never does it stop there. All you have to do is watch television to see to know what's happening. America's two faced it. America will build something up, make it number one, and as soon as it's number one, they'll tear it down. Or you see someone on the news they just tear it down. Prime example, a fight that happened at graduation. This fight. <laughs> Please stay seated. Please stay seated. Sounds like a saint song. <laughs> Look, we've already dealt with the person who was nice born for his Mexican hat, but now we're doing a graduation fight. <laughs> now he's throwing up gang signs. I mean, I mean, you'd be fighting up in the stands all about, you know, the he said, she said, all that kind of stuff. I'm on the bleachers. Up on a, in the audience would have been like, "Hey, you! You can be funny, you know, motherfucker! Come on, come on, motherfucker! Come on! Hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on! Hold on now. I mean, these. I mean, this is kind of like Jerry Springer. I mean, I could watch this fireball chant, Jerry, 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 Jerry Springer is seen before a live graduation, <laughs> and you start the first punch, Jerry, Jerry." Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. He wanted to feel mad. But it all started when someone hit his diploma on one person. It's like, this would have been like, I hate you. It's like, oh, you want to come on, come on, man. The one person started making gain signs. This fight happened in Florida. During a high school graduation, and many of you that saw that days ago, I know you were pissed. Some of you were laughing at that vid. But hear what some members in the community had thought about it. Take a look. Uh, Captain, absolutely. They didn't show that last night. Okay. Mm -hmm. They didn't. Quito I says what she witnessed Thursday night at the Renaissance Convention Center during her son's graduation is ridiculous. How do you fight at a graduation? In this video, a student is escorted out by the school security officer. That's when things escalate and the student throws his diploma at another child's neck. It's a time for celebration, so why is everybody fighting? Why are you angry? What's the problem? Tell me. According to Memphis police, this started when a student started flashing gang signs. Memphis police say the security officer tried escorting him out, but that's when the student threw his diploma. The security officer grabbed him and detained him. But the student was able to jump over three rows of seats and started fighting the student he hit with a diploma. They say that's when two other students jumped in and one had to be pepper sprayed. The wife of an employee who was at the event says her husband is injured from the fight. He had a big bruise on his left eye. Um, they broke his glasses. They broke his glasses. Um, his ankle is, well, the front of his foot, is, it looks like it's fractured. According to this woman who does not want to be identified, this all stemmed from a prior incident between the two students. She thinks those two students should not have been at the graduation in the first place. Now, they were not in school, but he gave her here, here's the packet that you guys could come and walk. Knowing that these, you, you, knowing that this was the end of the school year, knowing that these kids were vowing to get each other. White says as a parent, this was hard to see. Memphis have a huge problem, period. Not just with, it's a, it's a real problem with you. Reporting for your news leader in South Memphis, I'm Jessica Noss, WREG News, Channel 3. Bringing chaos now to the graduations. And the graduation did continue that night, but all suspects and victims were either issued juvenile summons or a misdemeanor citation and released to their parents. We reached out to the Memphis School District for a statement and we're still waiting for a response from them. All right, more news to. <laughs> 
Stop us from getting inside that man. Oh, you want to go, motherfucker? Please stay seated. Please stay seated. Cool, motherfucker. The Bible said that graduates would have to check Jerry, 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 Jerry. <laughs> Common sense alert. <laughs> what are you guys doing? It's graduation. You guys have been getting your diplomas. What the fuck, bro? No fighting at the graduations. If you're angry about something, then go take it out in the parking lot. Go do it at your house. But don't do it in a school second event. Your ass is going to be pepper sprayed and you're going to wind up going to juvenile detention centers. <laughs> Jerry, 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 Jerry. Jerry's fear saw it from heaven. And now here's Willie. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to talk about next, but we'll think of something when we return. Stay with us. We're not going to take you to Ohio, where a school district there is banning the use of a cell phone. That's right. Dayton, Ohio. One school district in Ohio is banning cell phones. Yes! Yes! Finally, someone watched my show, and thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for raising some, for help for them watching this broadcast and raising the common sense of our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Now the person demands cell phones, and in this case scenario, the test scores are going up, 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 up. Instead of going down, 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 and being flattened like a little tortilla. School leaders named Plymouth School District decided to ban cell phones from middle school and high school campuses. That's just, and as the school year comes to a close, they're already seeing improvements in reading, math, and social interaction between students. Take a look at this. Before the bell rings, students at Dunbar High School in Dayton, Ohio, place their phones into these envelopes labeled with their names and grades. The mornings are just like TSA. Bags, purses, food. Most Dunbar students have gotten used to the new norm, but some still try to sneak in their cell in a hidden pocket, a bag of chips, a book with a phone-shaped cutout, but this one takes the takeout container. <laughs> yep, that's a phone under the chicken. <laughs> Language arts teacher and football coach James Lacking is part of the morning check-in crew. Do you have to laugh to yourself sometimes? Oh, we have a good time. We have a good time. It's, it's, it's fun to me now. The district leading the charge in a national battle in education to keep phones out of schools, and their mission is spreading like wildfire. Lawmakers in at least 10 states are already introducing or passing bills to ban the devices. A number of Ohio schools have made the decision to eliminate smartphone use during the school day, and I believe clearly that is the right decision. <laughs> Spanish teacher Essence Wright says it wasn't enough to ask students to keep their phones off or in their backpacks. What is going on with the phones in the classroom before this ban went into effect? Constant notifications. Constant notifications. What does that do to learning? It interrupts the whole process. It really does. Now you have to address it or you need to have an administrative moment in your classroom that could have all been avoided if it didn't even exist. And now it doesn't. Students don't have their phones from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. when school is dismissed. <laughs> Hear that? It's the sound of students at lunch talking to each other and playing games. When we, we were allowed to have our phones, like at lunch, it used to be like really silent and like nobody would talk. Seniors Jayla, DeAndre, and Rayvon, along with freshman Moses, say they understand the reasons for the cell phone ban. Raise your hand if your parents would say you are addicted to your phones. That's all she say. Yeah. Do you think your mental health is stronger because of this cell phone ban? Mm-hmm. That does, yes. Yeah. But it doesn't mean they always liked it. Like, I'm always used to just having it in my pocket, you know, so for it to be taken away, it's just like, it's like losing a limb. You weren't happy in the beginning. Now it's been almost a full school year. 
Has your perspective changed and how? At first, I didn't see like the reason for, for them taking their phone. But at the time it's passed, I've seen like the benefits from it, or how much of an effect it's had in classrooms and behaviors. New data out of Norway reinforces what educators call common sense. After examining middle schools with phone bans across the country, researchers found that students saw higher GPAs, fewer mental health consultations, and more than a 40% decrease in bullying incidents. Some parents worry about not being able to reach their kids in an emergency. David Lawrence is the Dayton Public Schools superintendent. When parents who push back and say there's an emergency, I need to reach my child during the day, what do you say? I say that there have been emergencies throughout the history of school. We've always done a good job of being able to prepare for emergencies and then contact parents in a way that's meaningful and pretty swift based on the emergency. It looks pretty low tech what you're doing. It is. An envelope. Uh, you can buy them at an, a convenience store. And so you put them in an envelope, store them, and then give them back. It's really easy. What would be your advice to other school leaders who are watching this and wondering if they should implement this in their school? I would say that it's cost effective, quick, simple, and easy. Seven hours of phone free time might be the best thing that's happened to education in a long time. They are actually being children. That's exactly what we want them to be. These are the last years of their childhood, and we want them to live them. Giant Uno, think about the last years of their childhood. That's such an important point. And the superintendent says early testing has already shown increases across reading and math for every single grade, seventh through twelfth. He's really encouraged by those results. Next year, he wants to have a researcher from the University of Dayton to begin studying the effect of the cell phone ban over time and on students' mental health as well. Okay, first of all, that's an incredible story. It shows it can be done. It can be done quickly. Yes. Um, okay, so, yeah, if a kid gets busted with the phone, what happens? Listen, this isn't meant to be really draconian yeah. and a punitive measure. You get three chances. On the fourth day, okay. phone found on you, your parent has to come to school to get that phone back. After the fifth time, it's a two-day suspension. So they give I you a very fair. period. And for the most part, kids are getting a hold of it. I mean, it, was, it was great to hear from the yeah. students in that story as well, because even the kids are acknowledging now, yeah. I am addicted to my phone. Yes. It does prevent me from learning. It just it seems like a no-brainer. I bet you there's some relief. Like, the kids are probably mad at first, which you could understand, sure. but then kind of, like, relieved to have uh, that decision taken away, and now we can just interact. What's yes. wonderful about it, at least what I'm dealing with with my middle schoolers, is if you don't have it and I don't have it, it then exactly. it's easier, because none of you guys have it. So you can mm -hmm. play Uno or do whatever. It's hard when half right. the parents right. are buying into it and the other half don't. Because then it just feels unfair right. That's to your why kids. This is the movements with kids our age where we're trying yes. to get a cohort of parents to yep. say, let's l not have our kids be the only ones. Yes. If we can all agree, yeah. then it's more, you know, you're not socially ostracized because yeah. you don't so have a phone. True. A 40% just... reduction in bullying. Think about it. 40%. I mean, someone just told me this weekend there was a group text of girls. Somebody got a text. They didn't read it. They didn't like it. And then it distracted her for the whole rest sure, of the yes. school day. Because right. she read it in between classes and then it just Absolutely. threw her off filter. Right. You remove phones, you remove that extra element that we really don't need. And you don't so. need it in your backpack either. Because yeah. right? then you know it's there. Yes. Right. It's like the phantom limb. It's yeah. just yeah. going off. Send this story to all your friends. Yes. Yeah. All Thank of that. That's a good story. Really great. Like Way to go, Ohio. Yeah. Let's go. Hitting <laughs> rocks. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't yeah, way to go, Ohio. We've already raised the common sense. We've raised the common sense bar. But the laws... Look, look, there are laws. There are cell phone ban laws. Utah, Kansas, Oklahoma, Florida, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio, Virginia, VT. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ten states have these cell phone ban bills. While all of these... Other states right here, they don't have that cell phone ban bill. Now, why is that? Because nobody gives a crap about what goes on. I mean, let's look at the comments. When you see a phone hitting the food takeaway box, you know the addiction has reached the highest level. Okay? Phones become the new crack of cocaine society. Crack cocaine society. Yes. Make this nationwide. This is not new going up in 2000s. Phones are not allowed in school and you, and you and you have to hand it over. You can get caught. Go higher. No more phones. These kids need to break this addiction. Other states need this law to prevent distraction to the educational process. That's the whole key here. We're trying to prevent every single distraction 
to the educational process that includes dress codes and technology. The main reasons why cell phones are banned from schools is this. Not only because it's a distraction to the, to, to the educational process, or it's against school work policy, kids use them to cheat. And everyone had their opinions like, oh, cell phones should be allowed in case for emergencies like 911, or accessories like a calculator, or internet use for educational games or for projects. And, that, and a lot of people is, they just use them to just text in class. We dealt with a lot of texting in class throughout this throughout this year, and what I want to do when we come back is revisit the no texting in class segment, but while throwing into common sense. But also first, when we return, one of my main a look back back then to where if you get if you got caught with your phone, stay with us. When I was here growing up in school, everyone would have their phones out. Most of them would not have their phones out. Most of them, some of them did, most of them didn't. However, if you were caught with your phone, what I learned was, as a rule, if you were caught with your phone, it would be taken up. Then it didn't have to be sent to the office and it would cost you $15 to get it back. Take a look at this clip. And then we'll talk about it. Sydney, what do you got? Nothing. Texting at class is against school policy. Cell phones should not be seen or heard. A teacher has a right to take it away. It will cost you $15 to get it back. Yep, $15 to get it back. Every... Every scene is to have it. My school, you get a take-in call a parent today's three days, three days in school, spent two days of after school detention. My school is $15 to get it back. When I get caught, I just don't give it to them. I mean, if it's what the school wants, it's what the school wants. But for texting in class, you never I mean, it's also, it's also a distraction. <laughs> Okay, so if I gave you the problem, 2x minus 10 equals 32. So who thinks that they can solve this problem? Junior, yes. are you texting in my class? No. I just saw you using your phone. Give it to me, you can have it after class. You're not getting nothing. Give me your phone now! We go to next. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus... I've got a question. Yeah, what's your question? Where's Junior? I don't know. Maybe he's sick. No texting class. I mean, we've already... we touched the surface of this. We've now raised some common sense. So infinitives in Spanish are the most based. Shani, did I just hear you texting? Yes. Give me your phone. No. Can I get my phone? Do you pay my bill? No, I don't think so. This is your last chance, Shani. Then give me your phone. No, you can call me and pay off. Ho ho! So infinitives in Spanish are the most based. Shani, did I just hear you texting? Ms. Ardona's office. Thank you. I think there's very, I think 
I didn't even need the common sense sword for this uh, for this video. And there's basically no texting in class. They just take it very, take it very seriously. Here's this one. You think you're cool than me? You got... Wow, this class is so boring. I already know all this stuff. The next day. Texting in class. I don't know anything on this test. I wonder what my grade's gonna be. My mom's gonna kill me. Make sure you go to BSS to make up your grade. Electronic devices are not to be used during class. Exactly. Think of the consequences before you act and do the right thing. Consequences always include the failure of grades. That's why phones are prohibited in all these schools. Basically because it's a distraction the educational process. I told you all time and time again, do not be texting in class. What do people do? They sit there texting in class like it's no big deal. Well, what's that? It is a big deal. And take a look and look at my throwback Thursday. Common sense alert. Nine months ago, now before we get started here, y'all might be thinking, don't you do your throwback Thursday on the, the GMU channel? Well, we're going to go backwards because I talked about this issue on 
on the GMB YouTube channel. It's an issue that's focused on, that every school says is a distraction. We're talking about texting in class. I want to spend just, I want to spend four to five minutes just deal, talking about, talking to you guys about what happened. If you want to see it, I'll put it in the description. But I want to talk about, I want to talk about other things I did not talk about in that video. We weren't focusing on the fifteen dollars. We focused in on cell phone policies. We focused in on teachers breaking phones, etc. But the the one thing we have not focused in on, and I want to spend four or five. I want to spend five, four or five or ten minutes. Talk about this. I mean, think about this. Here's a question: What would you do? So now, now here's where the common sense goes into play. <clears throat> if you're fed up with your students having having phones out, you take it away. You don't automatically think, "Hmm, what can I do? I know. I'll go get a jammer." I'm going to get a jammer and jam the phones. I don't care if it's a nearby tower. You may write to the school district and they may say, okay, so-and-so, this and this. I mean, what if Sonny had to get a hold of 911? That teacher there would have probably said, I don't care I don't care if you reach 911. I want, to, I want my students focusing academically. And hey, I get it. I understand completely. You, you don't want your kids to, you don't want your students to be academically distracted. I understand. You can put it in a box. You can put it in a container. You can have those little lock things. You can do whatever you want. You may even have a no cell phone rule, like we talked, like on that, like on the video that, like on our last episode nine months ago, nine months ago that you made show me. And like we talked about, if you don't know the story about when a teacher jammed a st jammed student's phone, if you don't know when we talked about that, let's, uh, it's first up here at 10, a uh, science team. Let's take a look at this. First up here at 10, a science teacher at 5A High School became so frustrated with the students using their cell phones during class, he didn't take them. What he did was he jammed them with a jamming device. But now the Pasco School District is calling him out on it because it's not only against school policy, it is illegal. Fox 13's Ken Suarez is at the school in Hudson. Cell phones. Kids bring them and use them in school all the time now. I see people on the phones constantly, whether it's talking to their parents, whether it's getting hold of work, going to class. Pasco County lets kids use their cell phones between classes, but not during them. Dean Liptak wanted to make sure of that. He used a jammer so that his students' phones wouldn't work during his science class. Liptak wrote this letter to the district. In part, it reads, My intent for using the device was to keep students academically focused on schoolwork. It's counterproductive to stop instruction and lose academic focus when I have to tell a student to put his or her cell phone away. 5A administrators finally realized what was going on when Verizon called and said the jammer was affecting a nearby cell tower and messing up cell phones in the surrounding neighborhood. That can be dangerous. If someone needed to call 911 in the school or in the vicinity, they may not have been able to get through. It you know, could have been a life or death situation. There could have been law enforcement in the area that we're not receiving signals. That's why using a jammer is illegal. Liptak could have potentially been arrested by the sheriff's office. He wasn't. However, the school suspended him for five days. I think the action might have been a little harsh on the teacher as far as to suspend him for that long a period, but, you know, rules are rules. Donald Walker agrees. I think it should be a write-up. District officials say they took Liptak's entire record into consideration when they made the call to suspend him. 
Liptak has been disciplined before this. He used an example of um, throwing a baby out of a window to calculate how long it would take for it to hit the ground. Another instance, according to the district, where he made a bad call. Even though local law enforcement is not going to charge his teacher, the FCC could be a totally different matter. They can charge you up to $100,000, possibly even more than that, if they catch you using a jammer. Mark? Ken Soros reporting for us. Ken, thanks. It's illegal to use a jammer. A jammer. That's why it's illegal. You may think they say, I don't care. I don't want my students to get focused. I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll jam your phone right now. But it'll work. I'll jam it again. One more time we'll do it. Again. 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 You don't use a jammer. Just look at these comments. Nothing like coming to fellow client prevent students from using their cell phones in class. Mad teacher broke one of the students' five phone X. The teacher gave a reward, but it's kind of sad when you didn't know enough to turn down the jamming power. You don't need you need you don't need much just to handle this handle the room. His problem is that the he he had his jammer on too strong. He could have made it solely for that class. It's pretty easy. I agree hundred percent because kids often use their phones in class. Administrators, well, we were a lot, a lot of touch student phone, touch students' phones. If any phone was broken or scratched according to students' co complaint, teachers were financially responsible for replacing it, the unit in question. 106 students' phones a day, you do the math. What about no phone in the class? It's just as simple. It's just as simple. Just as simple. No one knows. You use a jamming device, you can get in big trouble. And you could really be in big trouble for just using that phone. I mean, schools have policies. We have a BYOD. And to be clear, no one knew common sense. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. We're now taking you to Brooks County, where Grayson in Pennsylvania was assaulted by another student. Grayson is just five years old, and he was assaulted by another kinder by another student, a kindergarten student that was assaulted by another student. The pictures you're about to see are very disturbing, but you're about to meet the father, who says he talked with the school district, and now he says they didn't get the answers that they needed. So, is there more being done? Here's Jennifer Lee. I have a five-year-old who doesn't want to go to his kindergarten graduation because he's too scared to go to school. In a viral TikTok video played nearly seven million times, Stephen Callahan of Bristol Township shows a picture of his son Grayson after he was attacked at school. The five-year-old whose birthday's in a week, who's going to spend his birthday with a giant gash glued shut on his forehead, missing some teeth and bruises all over his face. Grayson is in kindergarten at Keystone Elementary. His father says the school called him on May 16th, saying there was an accident. It wouldn't be until hours later the principal finally explained what happened. This was no accident that a teacher's aide that works with special needs students from the county was not paying attention and not handling the child she was supposed to. And a fourth grade special needs student attacked my son. The special needs student grabbed my son by the back and threw him head first into a table, which caused all the damage to his face. Bristol Township School District says in a statement, quote, we are apologetic to the student and family and wish the child a speedy recovery. The Bucks County Intermediate Unit runs a special education program that utilizes space within Keystone Elementary School. The district goes on to say students serviced by Bucks IU and the staff who run the program are not with the district. Bucks IU tells Fox 29 in a statement, both students are part of the Bristol Township School District. They say Bucks IU is investigating, saying, quote, based on the outcomes of this investigation, the Bucks IU will take appropriate action specific to the students, team members, and programs involved. Yeah, they're concerned about their public image at this point. If they were gonna save a face, they should have saved my five-year-old's face. 
not worrying about theirs after the fact. Lawyer Dave Langsom is now representing the Callahan family and asked the district and Bucks IU for investigative materials. When you take your child to a school and you have an expectation, rightfully so, that he or she is going to come back without being assaulted, it would be nice to have the video to actually see physically what happened to him so that the doctors can plan accordingly. The family says this was not the fault of the special needs student or parent. They do plan on holding the educators involved accountable. My son is not the only kid whose safety was neglected due to the systemic issues with public schools. Bristol Township Police have also launched an investigation of their own. And as for Grayson, Shiba, we're being told that his parents are not sending him back to school. In fact, he has some appointments coming up, especially with concern to his head. And that was not going back to school this year or really ever back to Keystone Elementary. Very difficult time for that family for sure. Jennifer, thank you. I want to make a range. If I, if I had a lot of money, I'd make a range for this family to move here to Flower Bluff. Great Special Education Program puts you in touch with the superintendent. Any issues, you come to him, he'll take care of it. Let's look at these comments. If a child is dangerous, they need to be kept away from little children. A five-year-old doesn't expect to be attacked at school. Violent kids do not belong in public schools. Special needs or not, no child should ever be harmed at school. The other needs to be expelled and never allowed back on school property ever again. Special needs, no excuse justification, period. There are lots of fights that grow out of the schools. To fight very beyond a five year that's ridiculous. Where are the teachers that don't supervise the kids? Maybe they're out drinking or playing poker. They don't freaking care. You may, you took, if you're gonna be a teacher, you need to take an oath to make to you need to take an oath to make sure that you watch the, the the parent's child every day, and not lay and not lay a hand in anger on the child. No ifs ands buts or excuses. The child is injured. You need to intervene and say, "Hey, you okay? Let's take you to the nurse's office." Did they ever do that? Not, no. No flipping way. Nobody ever did a damn thing but just sit there and said, we don't care. Yeah, my six-year-old daughter was punched in the stomach on two different occasions by another student. The principal's enemy was to send my daughter on a course of how not to be bullied. Really, it's the boy who punched her needs to be re-educated. Yeah, again, this comment right here from Joe Lighted 8861 that just basically said... Just puts the spotlight back on the victims. Lawsuit. To anyone has been in news usually who isn't with us anymore because of bullying. I understand the culprit is special needs, but it's unacceptable. School needs to be held accountable. There we go. It's like poking the bear to piss off corporate America. Damn, this is totally unacceptable and excusable. Kiddos, it's death for fighting for his son. Apologetic? This is pathetic. I hope he sues the ever living hell out of these people. Maybe you should sue the family for assaulting the kid. You'd probably be more successful. Yes! If you ever find the family, go to the house and say, Hey, you owe my you owe my son an apology for what happened. Look at his face. Like, oh my god. Well, this should never have happened. I'm very sorry. Why the heck is a 10 year old child being in class with five year old children? Even a special education program, there's nothing. There's something called age appropriate peer contact. This is not it. What the heck is going on out there in the Philly region? There is no excuse at all, period. I am always clearly crushed with children. Children are afraid of school and no longer want to attend. School is supposed to be a safe place for all the kids. I am so sick and tired of schools proclaiming their anti bullying is unac it's unacceptable. Well, then why does it continue to happen? That's a good question. My question is. Why is the victim always the one being punished? Again, the spotlight. This spotlight. I was the bully. You think this spotlight will be on me? Nope. It goes back onto the victim. The victims are always getting punished. Why it why always then the victims are being punished? 
instead of getting the help, they punish the victims. They bring the victims in and they sit there and say, well, you're lying to us, you're in trouble. Instead of just thanking them. Kids can be very cool with each. Bullying has always been a problem. It's just used to be handled in, in very, very different, both at school and at home. When I was a kid, if I got in trouble at school, I got into worse trouble when I got home. But if I was being bullied and I beat up a bully, I wasn't one I wasn't one thrown out. Too many parents today just do not parent. We see it everywhere from the kids running around in grocery store tearing things up displays, stealing to running up and down the airplane aisles while the parents ignore it and and act and act like say their child isn't does nothing wrong. I like society well, on CPS to have too much interference in parenting as well as parents showing, shoving a phone or tablet in their child and telling them, go play and don't bother me. 21 attention and discipline. If they, if they get constantly ignored and pushed aside, they develop behavior problems. This has been known for decades. Don't have babies if you don't like children. What does that tell you? They're sending a child to school. The, the spotlight goes back on the victim. And even then, the story that you will see next is of a father who got arrested for slapping a boy who allegedly bullied her daughter. Now, this was five years ago. And believe me, You'll hear, you'll hear his story next. Stay with us. Before we get to our next story, read some common sense. Let's read some more comments. I have a 501. I can totally under, understand how this man feels. This is going viral nationally, so the district needs to release this video immediately. Press charges. Damn right. Special needs. Connect order and ODD doesn't count as special needs. Hire a pit bull lawyer. Oh, dad did. <laughs> Always take your child in the emergency room. That starts a paper trail that cannot be disputed. Will the little guy's injuries heal quickly? This is why so many parents are done with the BS and have gone back to homeschooling. And why was a third grade grader in the same area as kindergarten? It's a kindergartner. I'm going to tell you something. I have a friend who homeschools her kids, and I'm not against it. You have the right to send your child to any school you want. You have the right to homeschool your child. It's your right as a parent to, do, to know do what's best for your child. And I'm not against homeschooling. I'm not against homeschooling. I'm with every decision that you're that you want to make for your child. And I'm with you on that. The No Child Left Behind program probably needs to be revisited. Okay, smartest coming of all. How so? No child left behind means even if your child is failing, they'll still be allowed to move up a grade. It doesn't mean they're held back. Oh my, this isn't a thing about being held back with five-year-olds. No child left behind has zero to do with this video. You know what you're talking about. NCLB is not exactly what you think it is. It's a trail of experts, SMH. <clears throat> I'm still trying to feel no child left behind. And they have no idea what the law is about. NCLB has absolutely nothing to do with the educational placement special needs kids. Comment makes no sense. I think what you're looking for is inclusion, which is a program that, that special needs students interact and consist with general education students in their classes or social activities. It's actually a wonderful program that teaches neurotypical children empathy and comparison while helping special needs kids with their social and life skills. The teens programs bring out much brightness, love, gentleness, etc. for the general education kids and just makes one thing one week. And it's far too much. Teachers say he had a little bump in today. He was checked over. Disgrace. This is disgusting. Imagine a child showing up at school like this. The father would be in jail. So it could be a felony. School excuses. What parent wouldn't, wouldn't lose after seeing this? Admire strength. Obviously, these children weren't being monitored. I hope they gained enough money to, to homeschool him. Yeah, from that lawsuit. And sue the school district. All right, we read enough comments. Let's play some common sense. Okay. 
You want to homeschool your child, that's your choice. You don't want to send your child to public school, hey, that is your choice to make. And I respect your decision to what, to what, what you want, what's best for your child. Very do. I, I understand that you want what's best for your child, and I respect that. When we, when we send our children to public schools, we want them to come home safe. We, they come home to us with a bloody eye, we have the right to know what happens. We want, we want to protect our children from all these massacres, from all these school shootings. And with the uh, two-year anniversary of Uvalde coming up, it seems to me that school doesn't care about safety. They don't have anti-bullying. Anti-bullying. But I take bullying very, very seriously, which is why I created the Stop Bullying Speak Up group on Facebook. And if the guy named and, and Eric came and he was on this broadcast in person, he would hear about this story and he'd be like, what the hell was going on? All right. Right now it is our... Now a story you only see on this broadcast. Could you imagine, as of that, could you imagine being arrested for slapping your daughter's bully? For slapping a minor student? Like, you'd be like, Daddy, Daddy, I got punched in the face by some bully. Where does she live? Hey, you the kid that picked on my daughter? For assault and battery. Push this by your back. You have the right to remain silent. And you say, Kill me as a case of court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford a attorney, you can't afford You shut up. I can afford a thousand attorneys. I'll be badging the head for this. Walk with me. This is your cell. You'll stay here for a long time. Sit your ass down. A story you're about to see could really shock you. Take a look. 12-year-old Presley Rigney says she was getting bullied. I was just minding my business, not saying anything. And he I ha had actually walked up to me and had said, like, you look like you're transgender and stuff, and saying I have no chest. And the past few weeks at school have left her in tears before the bell rings. And he threw ice cream at me. Um, he actually flicked a spoonful of ice cream at me on my shirt, and, um, yeah, it was just very hurtful. She called her parents and told them what was happening. Her stepdad came to pick her up. I was like, okay, let's go home. And he goes, no, I want to have a word with them. A word was all it was supposed to be, but James Peace says it escalated. And why not even going as far as it did if he would have quit running his mouth? The criminal complaint says it happened here outside this home. The boy and a friend were walking home from school when confronted by Peace. All caught on camera, police say the video showed Peace slapping the 12-year-old with such severity that it knocked his headphones out of his ears. I wish it would have gone differently. Uh, maybe I, I should have, you know, where the parents at? You know, I probably should have walked home and talked to his parents, but I just, I, I didn't like where his mouth was, was taking him and uh, what he was saying. And if, like I said, if I wasn't intimidating him, what, what were they doing to her every day? He says he regrets getting physical, but for his daughter, he says the mugshot and permanent mark on his record are worth it. You know, I'm not going to walk around here and hurt no kids I've never had before in my life. It's just I defend my kids, and if it was ever the same way, I would, I would probably, I would check my own kids in front of you if I needed to. Right there in there. Well, the family says the one thing they have been surprised about is the outpouring of support that they've received online. We've tried reaching out to the family of the boy who was injured, but we have not yet heard back. Uh, Peace says 
He will deal with whatever consequences come his way. That punishment could mean up to five years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Jason? Thank you, Jeanette. If you had to go out of your way and offend your, to, to offend your child, I'll tell you this. If you had to go out of your way and offend your child, you would have no attitude. A slap in a child, that's a minor. That's a juvenile. Crying out loud. For crying out loud. A stick. Okay. Let's look at these comments. You don't discipline your kids, someone else will. Why all these kids nowadays, they're picking on they're picking on the victims because the parents are spoiling the other kids. He ain't go Mason. He ain't go Ma he ain't go Julie. He ain't go Piper. He ain't go Grayson. They're spoiling the kids. The fathers nowadays on the other hand they're saying, You're spoiling these kids too much. That's just the way it is. Look at these comments. If you don't discipline a kid, someone else will. How come bullies don't get charged for assault? In a hard way. Bill said for real. In a story. I agree. That's exactly it. Discipline from home is safer than discipline from the streets. Amen. Very true. Exactly. Exactly. Bingo. Exactly. Facts of God. Fa facts. I got a little cousin who acts up at school. He thinks it's okay. He's a lucky. Think it's okay to hit. He's lucky. He's lucky. Now the parents hit him back. And my aunt does everything to teach him, right? But he doesn't want to listen. It's a damn truth. I 100% agree with the original comment that was deleted by YouTube. That fun behind bars. Hope you know back in the day, the use use if kids got out of control. Back in the days. We're not back in the days. We're in modern, we're in modern current days. Back in the days was the worst timelines ahead. Damn, these replies even. You don't give me judge a jury. Every parent takes their own kid to the side. How do we know his daughter was not in the aggressor? There is a code that parents live by. Don't hit your kids in an abusive way. If you're going to become a parent, rule number one is don't hit your kids. That's the number one rule. If you're going to hit your, if you're going to have children, here's the number one rule. Don't hit your kids in an aggressive way. The code that you live by is this. And if you cross that line, you become like a lot of other people too. And if you think I'm calling Batman, you're goddamn right I'm calling Batman. The code you live by that matters. You don't want to cross the line that you can't uncross. But for this dad, I think he crossed the line by hitting the child. But he's got to learn. Once you cross the line... You cannot uncross it. Dumbest arrest ever. Look, boy, learned his lesson. Dad should not have been arrested. It was his role to protect his. Well, if it was the law, if it's the law, it's the law. You break the law, you go to jail. He became the father. That boy was crying for absolute legend. Born with nothing except knowing that the laws enable bullies. My kids are not acting right. I slap them around too. Fair and square, Dad. One on one. And Dad be like, I don't. I mean, do you tell Dad this? I mean, like, I don't give a shit. I'm doing what's best for my daughter. Hey, you do what's best for your daughter. You go to your you go to the bully's parents' house. And you let them know what's going on. And they want to sit there and deny it. Then the spotlight can be thrown back on the victims. Say, hey, my daughter would never lie. Everybody has to be apologetic and say, hey, you know, we were in wrong here. I'm sorry. Just go to the house and apologize, shake hands, and move on from it. It's just that simple. I would have made a jury trial. I'm gonna get off my soapbox here. Just for this, I'm gonna get off my soapbox.
You had the I mean again. I would. I don't want to say that dad was crossing the line or breaking the law. You don't go ahead and slap some other child. You can slap. Your, let me tell you. You can slap your own child. If, if you can spank your child here, he she got on line one. You smack your kid's child. You when you smack your kid's child from the parents, you cross the line. You cross the line, buddy. You're in another child. The parent, the parents do have the right to press charges. They really do. I know that. I know that was not your intent to hit him, but the law is the law. Years in prison, along with a ten thousand dollar fine. Parents nowadays can can press the other parents' charges for for assault and battery. Again, I'm gonna get on my soapbox here. The bottom line here is this: you want to you want to protect your daughter, protect your daughter in your own way, shape, or form. Don't go to some don't don't go slapping a minor. If you want to deal with the bully's deal with the bully, talk to his or her parents. They'll sort the situation out. Violence is never okay. Think about the episode against Sheldon. It was all about Georgie and Mandy. Missy punched a boy in church. The parents, mom, pun Mary punished Missy. But dad was like, oh, she's fine, Mary. She needs to be punished. For what? Sticking up for us? I'm sorry, we're in California? Don't you move. Listen, if I had children, and and I had to punish my daughter or son for punching somebody. I would not be... Parenting is a partnership. Equal. Mom and I are equal. Parenting is a partnership. You don't go one way and then... You don't go one way and the other one goes the other way. You have to be both on the same page. If mom punishes the child, the dad has to stick with it. Not go the other way around. I mean, when a dad tell, when mom tells dad, "Hey, your son got suspended for fighting today," and he heard about it, and he wants to unpunish you, just take you out for ice cream. Let me show you a clip. Hey son, your mom just tell me you get into a fight today. I've been getting bullied for an entire year and, and I just cracked. I'm sorry. Why you not tell me? I did tell you. I know, I know. Your mom very upset with you. What, you think you the Jackie Chan, huh? I am very upset with you. Did you win? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I knocked him out. Yes, good job. You naughty boy, fucking my young dog me up. Mom my phone, no dinner for you. What? I buy for you the McDonald's. <laughs> really? You need to be more angry at me. Oh, yeah, true. Why are you doing this to me? He deserved it. Good, good. What? You want to talk back to me, huh, boy? Wait, what are you doing? Fighting. It's not good. You, you, you need to get hurt. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, shit. Run, run, run. Son, somebody. Now, what should have happened was he should have agreed with the, with the mother. But nowadays, we're just getting where... Dad wants to teach her. Dad wants to teach the daughter to defend herself, and Dad wants to teach the daughter and son how to defend themselves. Fighting is not acceptable. It causes problems for all people. I mean, like I said, I heard a conversation. I heard like one person talking about go kick his ass. It's like that's not the way to solve problems. I what I would I mean I listened in that conversation. You know I would if I had stepped in and say you know what that's enough. You do not condone violence on your daughter. I know you want her to defend herself, but let me tell you this. She went out there and started punching somebody. She can get in major trouble. And if the parents, if the bully's parents knew, they could trace it back to you, and they can have the right to press charges. 
and your daughter can take away to foster care if that were to happen. Now I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not saying this this and that. It is your choice. But when you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. Carry on. And it would have been like, well, that guy's right. Walked in and say, hey, thank you. You're absolutely right. I said, I'm not telling you to do your job. I'm just giving you some advice. It's like this. You don't, you don't jump to conclusions. You don't read the last page first. Just... You just don't jump to conclusions. We're right back. Would you like to know what happens when you hide a report card from your mom? Take a look. Take a look and find out. Report card! I bet I did so good! You failed everything! I'm gonna be in so much trouble! You better show it to your mom! I gotta make sure my mom never sees this! I don't have anything behind my back! Okay! I'm back here! Shut up! What was that? I have no idea! You're acting weird! I gotta go! I gotta hide this! You won't get away with this! What are you doing in there? She's gonna come in! He's trying to hide me! I gotta destroy it! It burns! What's going on in here? Nothing at all! What's this? You can't get rid of me! How is that possible? Get out of my house! Ha ha! You got in trouble! You ruined my life! Here's your report card. I bet I did so good. You failed everything. I'm gonna be in so much trouble. You better show it to your mom. I gotta make sure my... <laughs> Here's your... There was a social media post. A father says his daughter was suspended after being su suspected of coming to school. Here's our here's our next story. A father says his daughter was suspended after being suspected of coming to school high, but when he proved it was just allergies, he said that punishment continued. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Camera Local Force Jack Kessler has more from that father who hopes this never happens to another student. That's our top story tonight at 10. Mike Bartle's daughter suffers from severe allergies, and late last month she had an allergic reaction on a Saturday, causing her eyes to swell, and by Monday her eyes were still red. So on Sunday it was still kind of swollen, we gave her some Benadryl, um, so she'd go to school on Monday because we knew it was star testing that week. She woke up, her eyes were kind of red on Monday morning, still sent her to school. I get a phone call about 10 o'clock in the morning that she was intoxicated. Bartles adds he told the Austin Middle School administration when he comes to pick up his daughter that he would pick up a drug test at Walgreens and take it down to them. And he adds the Austin administration accused his daughter of using marijuana due to her eyes being red. She passed the drug test. They said that that drug test didn't work. That I would have to go get another one. So I went to the doctor's office, got her another drug test, and um, had to wait four days for the results. In the meantime, I took her back to school. They called me, said she can't be at school. Well, the first they said she was going to be ISS. Then they called me back, said I needed, uh, she needed to be out of school suspension. Then they called me back again, saw on the same day, said that she was going to have to go to an alternative school. Bartles says his daughter was allowed to take her STAR test on Tuesday, but he had to immediately pick her up afterwards because they didn't want her on campus. And Bartles says the results from the doctor's drug test would come back clean. He says his daughter is now back at Austin. The administration has since apologized, and he has filed a grievance, and he says they have a conference this week regarding the matter. Bartles adds that multiple people have reached out to him saying similar things have happened across the district. 100%, I think there needs to be some change, and I think, you know, everything's not black and white in any situation. I think it needs to be taken by a case-by-case basis and kind of look at the gray areas and, and extenuating circumstances so we can evaluate what's going on with kids. Now, according to the Amarillo ISD student code of conduct, students shall not possess, use, give, or sell alcohol or any illegal drug. They shall not possess, give, or sell seeds or pieces of marijuana and less, in less than a usable amount be under the influence of prescription or over-the-counter drugs that cause impairment of the physical or mental 
faculties, according to the Code of Conduct, under the influence means lacking the normal use of mental or physical faculties. It goes on to say impairment may be evidenced by a pattern of abnormal or erratic behavior, the presence of physical symptoms of drug or alcohol use, or by admission. A student under the influence need not be legally intoxicated to trigger disciplinary action. I'm Mr. Yo, Jack, SRK, Marvel, for News. And Jack, thank you. Now, according to a statement we got from Emerald ISD, quote, because of federal student privacy laws, we cannot comment on specific student situations. However, generally speaking, AISD prioritizes student and staff safety in all situations. When a safety concern is brought to our attention, campus administrators endeavor to make the best decision possible based on the information available at the time. Parents are encouraged to be a part of safety and discipline processes and to bring forward information relevant to the situation. The district wants to work in collaboration with families to ensure the best outcome for all involved." End quote. All right. I got nothing to say. Why would you get suspended for being high? It was just allergies. And you look at the man and go, oh, oh my God, she's high. We got to take situation. Go get your daughter. She's suspended. When your daughter's suspended again. Dude, it was allergies. Come on. It's called allergies for a reason. Look at all these. Don't file a grievance. File a lawsuit against school district. Put them in place. That's why so many parents are starting to homeschool their children. Because, because of shit like this. Ridiculous that schools think they are above the law. I will a hole for a math teacher in high school who kept accusing me of being high in class. Reality was A, I was wearing contacts to iterate my eyes, and B, his teacher sounds incredibly uninspiring that he treated people like dummies and didn't understand his lessons right away. I didn't touch any drugs after I graduated high school, but he just continued to get more and more vindicated. On a positive note, I'm a teacher now and I use this guy as an example of how not to treat my students. Good job, man. Sounds like defam defamation to me. Guilty to proving innocent. Just like the system's supposed to, right? Not exactly. All faculty needs to take drug tests. Defamination. So they were severely punished a child because they suspect substance to pain. You gotta allow kids to be bullied. Sometimes to death. File a grievance. File a lawsuit. Adults that control the school instead of serving are the bullies. This was six days ago. Exactly. The father's shooting administrator is supposed to be defamination of character. This needs to be fixed. OMG, get an attorney. No school should be testing a minor for drugs without parents' consent. But the dad was just doing something that was doing the right thing. When dad's just doing the right, it usually just leads to, I don't know, I don't know how to say this. Yeah. For a talk show like this, Yes. And again, there's things out there that need to change, really. It would be nice this kind of hero was not allowed anymore. School privacy medicine without a license, are they? If only there were settled case law and talks of so school where it hurts the money, these administration will not change unless there unless there's pain. Why is not cost sneezing? The school administration just wanted to cause trouble. Schools cause trouble. That's what it does. That's why this show is to educate the educators. We educate the educators and say, hey, you're doing this wrong. You need to do this right. And if you don't do something about it, the parents are going to want to sue your asses. And then you're going to want to sit there and say, how do we fix this? Unbelievable idea that middle school should never have to deal with something like this. Homeschool and sue. I, I got sick one time and came in my mouth. I had, abs I had a tooth. Look at all these. This is really BS. I crock at the stream. Bathrooms are closed because someone they can't figure out who's smoking and vaping in the bathrooms. Let's close red eyes and just spend it.
We've done over 800 episodes of this show. And never has there been a story that made me more pissed off than a student who got suspended for coming to school high when it was just allergies. Gee, I red eyes. I mean, my eyes are not red. Look at my eyes. Are they, do they look red to you? Not, no. I don't take drugs. But if I had allergies, that, but if I took drugs, that'd be a whole different story. And something should not have been done. Exactly. More should not have been done. And if more was done, we wouldn't be here talking about it, would we? Probably so. And I wouldn't be here talking about this. There wouldn't be no, there wouldn't be no broadcast about re-educating the educators and using common sense. Where? I mean... Schools have lost one thing, common sense. No one uses common sense. That's why this show is to read, to help educate the educators so that they watch this program and say, hey, this guy's right. We messed up. We've got to do something. Your guard, your darn tuning, you need to do something because you don't do something right now. You're gonna get, you're gonna get hit where it hurts. Meaning you can get sued and you're gonna lose a lot of money. Until the day comes, you need to find a plan to say, hey, 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 let's, let's come up with a plan so that then it doesn't happen again and we don't get hit with lawsuits. Sit down in a meeting and they could just be all like, what do we do? Come up with some plans, come up with a solution, and just simply not become the bullies. That's how, that's why kids are not being homeschooled. That's why parents send their kids homeschooled because the parents, that's why parents don't send their kids to public school anymore because they claim that the schools are the bullies. If that's so, where's the proof? Where's the proof? I'm not gonna go in there and ask parents, hey, do you have proof that you said you have proof that these schools are being bullies? I mean, you have proof and evidence. I mean, seriously, where is the proof? Where is the evidence? Where are the studies? Public school seem unsafe for my child? I'm sending, them, I'm sending them to homes. I'm homeschooling them. I mean, it's not the case to get homeschooled. And I get it. It's just the bottom line here. Let's raise some common sense and we educate the educators. I'll see you next time.